Hello and welcome to this year's uh, keynote speakers interview at Meeting C++. And as a start, I would like just shortly to ask to introduce yourselves as... Um, Yes, my name is Lars Knoll. I'm the CTO of the Qt company. Well, have been working there for many, many years, um, developing Qt as a technology, and I'm now also the chief maintainer of the Qt open source project. Uh, my name is Chandler Carruth. I am the C++ uh, language lead for Google. Um, also contribute heavily to Clang and LLVM. So. My first question would be, um, as all talks are now done, what uh, was your favorite talk of the conference? And keynotes don't count. Well, I have to say I liked Chandler's talk quite a bit. It was great uh, to get a little bit more insight into you know, the, how things look on the machine side of things, how you know, we, the code we write gets transformed actually into something the processor understands. So it was fun. And you know, listening a little bit about you know, how compilers nowadays do optimizations and things. So I enjoyed that very much. And your favorite talk? Oh, doesn't that count as a talk? No, no. <laughs> um, my favorite talk otherwise. Um, I like the talk by Peter about, uh, you know, what you can do nowadays in modern C++ with very added templates. And I found that, you know, nice and instructable. Thank you. Uh, I'd have to say the talk on uh, coroutines was really excellent. I thought James did a great job with that, and I'm really excited about that feature in general. Yeah, uh, well, my favorite talk, I, I saw two talks, and I really liked the talk from James, too. It was really, really good to delivered and important topic. And I saw just today the talk of Joel Farku on C++14 experiences, and that was also very interesting. Um, so, uh, Lars, as you are the chief Qt maintainer and basically Mr. Qt for many years, so I would like to, to ask you, um, I know that the next version of Qt is 5.6. Um, what features can we expect and when will it be released? Okay, so let's start off with when it will be released. Um, our plan was to have it released now, but uh, we'll, we're you know slightly late due to uh, you know some changes that we did in our infrastructure. Um, I hope that we'll be we'll have the final out sometime in January, end of January. Um, with regards to features, I think you know there's lots and lots of things we've done all over the place. But I mean, you know, if you want to mention a few, I mean, one of the big efforts that we had was was you know moving up to Windows 10, making sure we support that platform as a you know big new platform that Microsoft brought out as as well as possible. You know, we did similar things for for the latest Mac OS release and, and what Apple is doing there. So so that was a big push for us, and uh, one of the big I think you know non-technical features but that are ex extremely important for many of our customers is that we are now saying you know that Qt 5.6 is a release that we will support for a very long time. There are all the other Qt 5 releases we have been supporting for around you know half a year to a year. 5.6 we will have as a long-term supported release for three years. And I think that's a great thing because it gives our users a very stable basis to work with for the years to come. It also gives us as people developing Qt a lot of possibilities now to leave you know, some things behind for, for the upcoming releases afterwards for Qt 5.7, where we can then focus on you know, really making use of all of C++11 and you know, more modern C++ features. Sounds awesome. Um, I met Chandler the first time in 2012, and uh, he did back then a talk on, on Clang and a slip tooling, and uh, it actually motivated me to do also a talk on, my, on the first meeting C++ about it. So, um, and we just had an awesome uh, lightning talk on it. So I would like to ask Chandler, uh, as you know, he's known as, as a Clang guy, um, what are the, 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 your favorite features in, in, the, in the Clang tooling today? My favorite features in the Clang tooling today, that's so there are a couple of things that really jump out at me as things that are different from uh, when I first talked about Clang tooling. Um, today we have excellent automatic formatting support, um, and I can't emphasize enough how much that changes the game. Uh, it, was, it was starting, I think it was in its infancy when I presented it, uh, C++ Now, 
Um, but it's now really robust and, and it's been fantastically adopted. And I think the kind of the adoption of that actually has a lot of impact on C++. Um, probably the other favorite thing that, that I really get a kick out of is, is seeing things kind of uh, uh, come to fruition. So, so I gave that talk in the very early days of Clang Tooling. And there are very few users. I mean, very, very few users, even inside of Google. <clears throat> there are now hundreds of people inside of Google, and, and I don't even know how many people outside of Google that are using Clang Tooling. We're getting uh, routine contributions from the open source project. Uh, I, I, for me, the open source success of Clang Tooling is much more exciting than any one of the features. Uh, the fact that it's, it's being adopted, people are using it, people are actually talking. Like Scott Myers wrote a blog post where he talked about using Clang's tooling to, to provide automatic migration between old and new versions of C++. And, and, you know, we thought that was kind of a pipe dream back when I gave the talk in C++ Now, and now Scott Myers is talking about it, and he's, he's never worked on Clang, right? And, but he's actually realizing the potential here. And we have, you know, a demo of, of modernizing C++ automatically here. And, and I think that the, the kind of the ability for people to, to uh, uh, embrace change without breaking is, is just amazing. And it only happens with adoption, right? The tooling alone isn't enough. Uh, you know, people have to be using it, people have to be excited about it and engaged in it. Thank you. And actually I would like to ask a question each about the motivation uh, for your keynote. And I probably would or have to state that we still have to see this keynote, though all of us are really looking forward to this. But um, just a short sentence on what, what your motivation behind your keynote is. Okay, so the keynote is basically about um, I call it designing intuitive APIs. It's really about API design uh, and why that is important. Why is it, is it important to you know pretty much every C++ developer, every develop software engineer out there in the world? Um, you know, I have a lot of experience doing that, doing framework development that are used by you know hundreds of thousands of developers out there in the world. And and throughout the years, we learned lots of things how you know we could make these APIs accessible. You know, not only to the most advanced people, but also to easy to, you know, junior people. How we can basically lower the barrier to entry, and how how to try to make these APIs, you know, design them in the way that people can start using them without having to read lots and lots of documentation. So it's about, you know, making making sure that you know, with very little effort, you get a lot out of these APIs. And I think every software project can benefit from having these kind of, uh, from, from, you know, following some sort of guidelines there. And some of them are universal, some of them you can define for your project. Um, they will really help you in the long term, make, create a better code base, something that is more maintainable and more robust. And, you know, I'll, I just wanted to share my thoughts on these things. Yeah, and I think all of us look looking forward to this keynote. And yeah, well, the same question to you, Chandler. What was the key motivation for talking about optimization? Angry users. Lots and lots of angry, angry users. I, I you know, I support a large, you know, developer body, right? I've got 10,000 customers um, at Google, right? More, more, I don't know how many, but 10, 10 plus thousand, you know, developers. They're all using C++, and every single one of them knows my email address, my phone number, and where I sit. And that's scary. That's really scary, because they're not happy, right? And, and that's, that's what motivates me, is I want to try and, and take you know, my unhappy, bitter, angry, frustrated developers and turn them into happy, productive developers, right? And so I try and look at you know, what problems they're hitting. Like, what, what are they actually struggling with, and, and why? And, and you know, they're, all, they're, all, they're all smart, they're all you know, motivated, but they're still struggling and they're still unhappy, right? And so there's actually some problem that we need to go out and solve there. And, and it turns out that we can solve it, right? Like a lot of it is just education. And so, so whenever I'm trying to give a keynote, what I'm really hoping to do is to kind of shine some light onto the underlying issues, right? Provide uh, insight, understanding. Uh, people are a lot less frustrated by a tool that doesn't work the way they had hoped it would, but they, they understand why it works the way it does. Understanding is key. Right? Because then they can actually say, like, okay, so I can't have the, the nice cake that I wanted, right? Fine. But I understand that, you know, if, if, I, if I eat my vegetables and I cook them right, they'll still taste good, right? 
And, and that kind of understanding is actually really important. And, and it's been helping, right? We're, we are now moving, when I started working on C++ at Google, uh, everyone thought that C++ was dead and it was a literal liability for the company that we relied on C++, right? And, and now we're transitioning out of that. We're actually transitioning to, to it becoming an asset. But that, that's a slow process. And so for this keynote in particular, I was trying to address the frustration that my users come to me with around, you know, why, why does the compiler's optimizer do what it, what it does to my code? What, why is it not optimizing this code? And, and is it optimizing the other code? And, and I wanted to try and you know, give them you know, the basis to kind of understand that and to, to make you know, good decisions and to kind of you know, debug and, and, and figure out these problems on their own rather than having to come to me angry. So, so it's all self-serving ultimately. Okay, that was an interesting insight. Um, yeah, C++ is back and uh, meeting C++ has been great so far. Uh, thank you Chandler, thank you Lars for giving this interview and um, maybe see you next year at Meeting C++.